Today's video is going to be an adventure of learning. Now, not all of my videos are win videos where, where I turn out an amazing product. However, in this video here, I'm going to show you some of the steps that I took and some of the troubles that I had to get amazing products. And there's a lot of learning that goes along with this as well. The foundry that I have wasn't quite running as good as it could have been today. And it's a dual fuel system. So in order for it to run on oil and diesel, it needs to have propane running correctly. You'll have to remember that for a little bit later when I explain to you some of the things that are going on. And don't worry, there's no close calls and nobody gets hurt in this. It just doesn't turn out a perfect product in the end. And in the past, I've had an assortment of, of small failures and I've even had like say CBC came one time and I did some casting. And although I did turn out a good casting that day, there was a failure as well during that casting process. But it's not the wins that you're gonna learn as much on as sometimes your failures. So your failures need to be chalked up as learning. So I'm gonna don all my safety gear and we're gonna get into this one and I'm gonna show you a few things that I learned during this process today. Okay. Over the past couple weeks, I've slowly been increasing the difficulty level of the lost foam casting. And I think the Sitka tree is, is, kind of, <laughs> is kind of my nemesis on the difficulty of casting because it has a lot of fingers that kind of branch out from the center and there's a lot of little things that can go wrong. One of the things that I learned in the last video was is to stick stakes in behind the actual casting. The purpose of this stake here is to stop it actually from warping as you put the sand in because basically there's sand pushing on one side and it's obviously made of foam <laughs> and things kind of want to be plastic and bent. This has put a bit of the bending at bay and has been working reasonably well. Actually, it's been working quite well as long as it's placed correctly. Now, during the process of me loading this all up here, I pulled one of the stakes out just a little bit and I'll get to that a little bit towards the end and what happened there. Also, notice the sprues are a little bit different on the three different castings and we'll get back to that later as well. Now, the concrete vibrator has been working really, really well for vibrating the sand and making everything kind of compact. However, it also is good at making everything move around a little bit and is in, at times kind of warping everything. Basically it's causing problems as it compacts, it's kind of pushing everything around where the soft spots are. So now I'm gonna remove these stakes and then we're gonna throw some cups on top of everything. And if you haven't seen it before, the purpose of these cups here is basically to contain the aluminum that I'm gonna pour it into. It's basically a, a reservoir or a basin, so to speak, that's gonna hold the aluminum while it's molten because if we ever let it run dry with that foam in there, the sand's gonna collapse on everything and we're gonna have a botched, botched pour, so to speak. Now, previously I'd scored a 100 pound propane tank and I've been running off that pretty much all last year for all my foundry stuff. Remember, this is a dual fuel system. It needs the propane to keep the diesel and the oil running or it's not gonna run proper at all. Or you get a flame out like this and it creates a bit of smoke in the neighborhood. And I eventually battled this kind of on and off throughout the day. I'd have it running really good, and then I'd have a big flame out, <laughs> and then I'd have it running good again. You, you pretty much know how this goes. I'm pretty sure everyone's had similar experiences in their shops as well. The key to success is perseverance. Now, I had quite a few of these issues throughout the day, and it was pretty frustrating to tell you the truth. But in the end, I did figure out what the solution to my problem was. I was running a 30 pound propane tank and you can't exactly stick a flame under it to stop the propane tank from freezing, can you? But what you can do is, <laughs> and I never thought of this until I kind of saw another YouTuber doing this as well, if you can stick your propane tank in a bath of water. The idea is kind of counterintuitive, but it actually works quite well. Once that propane tank got down around the half mark, because I was bleeding off so much of the propane, the tank started freezing up. There's some basic physics here. Basically, when you compress things, they heat up, and when you release that compression, they cool off. That's basically how your refrigeration works, your fridge or your freezer. And once I figured out a few of these challenges, my day started going quite a bit better. However, notice that the crucible's not glowing red like it usually is. So that means I'm gonna run a little bit cooler on a pour which when you're doing lost foam casting, you want it a little bit on the hotter side. I think it's like 100 degrees above what you normally pour it. This is mainly because when you pour it into the, the foam, the foam's basically gonna cool everything off a little bit, and that's where you lose your 100 degrees. 
Now, pouring three at one time is pretty darn ambitious, because remember, these cups can't go dry at all. So each one of these is gonna have a different problem. I'm pretty sure the one closest to you is a short pour, and it collapses on the inside. And then one of them turns out okay, and the other one turns out okay as well, but it didn't have quite a good enough of a sprue, and it didn't get down low enough. Let's let this stuff cool off, and then we'll pull it apart, and I'll show you what the differences are on all of these pours, and it'll make a little bit more sense. One of the genius things that I've kind of come up with over the, <laughs> over the last couple days is, is because lost foam casting creates a really, really stinky mess of sand, and you'll notice I'm wearing an organic respirator as well to help protect myself against that, is I've got a mini job box, and this mini job box is stored outside, so all of those chemicals can kind of flash off outside, and I'm not consistently exposed to them inside my building. And lucky for me, it's keeping all the sand really dry and I haven't seen any moisture issues yet. The first one that I'm gonna pull out here is gonna be a short pour. This is where the cup went a little bit dry while I was pouring molten aluminum in there and the sand wound up collapsing. Let's grab it out of here and let's have a closer look. See, the tip on this one here, you can see how the tip of the tree isn't formally developed. Well, that's because the sand collapsed down on it and it wouldn't let the aluminum get, it, get down deep. You see, the foam is melting as far as we go. Now, on this one here, I pulled the stake out and the bottom of the tree got a little bit bent and the sand kind of deformed it when everything was cold. Now, this one here looks pretty darn good, but the aluminum was running a little bit cool and it didn't get all the way down to the base of the trunk there. We'll have a better look here in a second and I'll explain a little bit more about that. So once again, let's have a quick review here. This is the one where I pulled the stake out and the actual compacting of the sand deformed the foam, give, giving me a botched kind of pour. Notice also up on the neck there, there was a bit of like, bit of collapsing as well during a short pour, but it did find its way back through again once I started pouring it. I kind of sort of lucked out and it would have been a win had I not <laughs> deformed that foam there. Now the second one, the cup ran dry, as you can see up there on the top, and the foam collapsed once, once the hot sand and everything got near it, it kind of destroyed its own mold. Now, looking at the next one here, everything looks fantastic, except the bottom of the trunk. Now, the reason why the bottom of the trunk didn't quite develop proper <laughs> is because I ran it super, super cold, and normally I have that crucible glowing when I pour everything in there, which is 100 degrees above your pouring temperature. In summary, what I was trying to share with everybody today was a few of the lessons that I learned in the shop, but not only that is, it's pretty hard when you go out and watch on YouTube and you see everyone trying to show all of their wins all day long. And then like me, you get out to the shop and you have one of those days. It's very important for everyone to remember that a day of failure is not a day of failure. A day of failure is actually a day of hard learning. And that's where you make the most ground of learning. Although emotionally it can feel like, like you're drastically set back and you're not going anywhere, I assure you the next time I put this together and I actually go to cast something, there will be a ton of things that I learned out of this single day that I couldn't have read from books or, or even seen on YouTube. Because of course, most people on YouTube wanna show you their wins because they're embarrassed about their learning or failures. And even now, I'm melting down all of these learning expeditions, <laughs> and I'm going to turn all these learning expeditions into my next win, which is going to be an address sign for my house. And coincidentally, that's going to be my next Lost Foam Casting video, which I've already done, by the way, and is a win. So let's look out for that one in the next couple days, and I'm sure you'll enjoy that one. We'll catch you on the next video, and stay safe, everyone.